There is a podcast about an island in the North Atlantic where people have been looking for an incredible treasure for more than 200 years. Welcome back to Could It Be an Oak Island Podcast. We are your hosts, Deidre and Dustin White. Hey, everybody. Hello. How has your week been? Much better than last week. (laughs) Yeah, probably because you can sit upright now. That's exciting. Yeah, I feel a lot better. Hey, and thank you to everybody that reached out to me and asked me how my back was doing. That means a lot, so thanks. It does. That, That was really nice of people. Yeah, I had quite a few people reach out, so... Very cool. Doing a lot better. Thank you. Yes, it's nice to have you upright and actually able to move around the house and not have to lay down for our podcast recording. Yep. I can't do anything but agree with that. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so uh, what else has been going on around here? Well, other than watching an awesome episode of The Curse of Oak Island this week, which I can't wait to talk to you about. Me either. Lots of cool stuff happened in there. Um I've been able to connect with some of our fans on Facebook and Twitter, and that's been a lot of fun and exciting. I would like to give a shout out to one of our fans named Joe Miskell, and he left a nice message on Facebook saying how much he enjoys the show. He loves our audio quality and the flow between you and me. So that was pretty nice, right? Wow. People like listening to us disagree with each other or... Or not. Sometimes we agree. Sometimes. Yeah. (laughs) Well, anyway, he says that it's awesome that we share the same passion for hunts and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He specifically mentioned that he appreciated us bringing up the armchair treasure hunts that we had been participating in. And just real quick, what an armchair treasure hunt is, is where you find a treasure that is specifically hidden And there's clues put out to its whereabouts, and you solve the clues, and you can find the treasure. A lot of them are done from uh, just being at a computer at home and solving it that way. There's there's also hunts where you basically sit at home, research, do all the work from your armchair, then get up and have a boots-on-the-ground experience where you go out and try to retrieve the treasure once you believe you've solved all the clues. And we like to do a lot of that, right? Yes, we sure do. Yeah, so just a couple real brief mentions here of some of the hunts out there that you can participate in and where you'd be able to find information about them. First, we have Forest Fens, Thrill the Chase. Mm -hmm. That's like the kind of the biggest one that is ongoing. Said to be worth over $2 million. And this guy named Forest Fen, he hid a treasure somewhere in the Rocky Mountains back in 2010, or so they say. And if you could figure out its whereabouts by solving the clues in his poem that he put out, you could go and find it. And it's like, it's literally a treasure chest filled with gold, jewels, uh, ancient artifacts. So whoever finds that's going to be super rich. Do you want to find it? Yeah, let, let's do that. Let's get our <laughs> boots in the Rocky Mountains. Yeah, so someday. So that's like Montana, Colorado, New Mexico, uh-huh. and Wyoming. It's in one of those states. And uh, didn't they just greenlight some kind of TV yeah. show about it? Yeah, they just greenlit a pilot for a family that is searching for Forrest Fenn's treasure. And I believe it's Fox. Yeah, Fox. Fox Network. Mm-hmm. So that's something that I'm definitely looking forward to. I can't wait to watch something like that. Yeah, we'll definitely keep an eye out for it. Yeah. And uh, the other treasure hunts, like we talked about it before, we do The Secret. And it's like it's a hunt that's been going on since 1982. Twelve treasures were buried around the United States and Canada. Two have been found, one in Chicago in 1983 and one in Cleveland, Ohio in 2004. And to date, that's it. So lots of treasure out there to find is for the secret. Another one is the one that we chatted about uh, early on in the podcast called Fandango. It's a uh, it's a throwback to the kind of the granddaddy of them all, Armchair Treasure Hunts, which was a hunt called Masquerade that was done in the late 70s in England. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a picture book and it has clues and kind of some, as clues and, does it have poetry? Yeah, it has clues, it has riddles. Uh, they both have a story. They're essentially children's books, but they're... But 
kids aren't going to solve these things. <laughs> no, they may enjoy the story, but yeah. really it's for those of us that are interested in cracking the clues and getting boots on the ground to find the secret hidden treasure. And that one ends this this next year. So time's ticking there. Yeah, that's the one we want to go to Maine to look for. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, so anyway, that that's just a couple that are out there. And if you want more information, go to www dot mysterious dot com. I write for that website sometimes. I've done quite a few articles, including a beginner's guide to the secret that came out last year. And, and you know, they got everything you need to get started on these things. They're super fun. They it's a chance to get your family out to go and find some real treasure. You know, you don't have that opportunity every day, but you can. Mm-hmm. Because we don't have millions of dollars and an island made of oaks. Yeah. Island of oaks, not made of oak. That would make it a dam, right? No. No. Uh, I don't have millions of dollars in a sonic drill, but I want to talk about them. Yep, let's get on to it. What happened this week uh, on Oak Island? So many things. We got a big uh, U-shaped structure revealed, or is it the L-shaped structure? Maybe it's a U and an L. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. It's got Roman numerals all over it. It's Smith's Cove, which is what we've all been waiting. Okay. It's what I've been waiting for. Yeah, I got what I was waiting for last week Mm -hmm. and a little bit more this week with the 90 foot stone. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we're we're there. We're in the, you know, we're behind that. Or are we in front of that coffer dam? (laughs) (laughs) Yes. So, well, let's see here. We started in digging Smith's Cove. We hit. Three different logs in the structure. Yeah. Three, four. We at least saw three different Roman numerals. Yeah, what, seven, three, and four? Yeah, seven, three, and four. And the seven, Mm -hmm. I just, I think everybody noticed how different it looked than the other usually. Yeah, it's like barely scratched in. Yeah, it seemed like the guy that carved his name in the 90 foot stone just took his pocket knife and walked over to smith's cove and did the same thing on a log i hope that wasn't like dan blankenship kind of playing joke on whoever's gonna get it (laughs) next because you know he knew the storm was coming and it wasn't you know his his coffer dam wasn't gonna survive and he's like hey you know what i'm gonna scratch a little (laughs) bit of something on this he's like watch this guys yeah and he's he's just like uh remember that laugh from a couple weeks ago yes (laughs) <laughs> yes. or whatever yeah. he's like uh uh-huh. he gets gotcha. his pocket knife out and that or maybe he's just like okay this is where i left off so i'm yeah. gonna carve this and it'll be fine i'll get back to it as soon as i can get past this store yeah so i don't know i that was really uh cool to see them finally get to the structure mm-hmm. what was it well who built it yeah we don't know with the who the what the how I don't know. I've been dwelling a lot on this U-shaped structure this week and trying to contemplate about it. What it is, who built it, what the purpose of it was. Do you do, have you speculated or thought at all what it might be? I've got a feeling it's it's not like 1500, 1600, 1700s. No. It's probably something from the 1800s, yeah. Okay. So then do you think maybe 1800s and they were trying to solve the Oak Island mystery. Yeah. It's an yep. interesting thought. Probably. That might I don't know. I, I have no idea what it was. I've never seen anything quite like it. Well Did it did something was it is it like the foundation of something that sat on top of it? Is it I don't know. Okay, so here's as I, I've been really trying to wrap my head around it and what could it possibly be so we know that smith's cove was man-made right Mm -hmm. the beach yep so i grew up with a my father was a army engineer so anytime we were going to do a project or anything we were going to engineer it to death which even meant if you were hanging pictures in the hallway we were going to draw a picture of it we were going to make a plan and you were going to plan to plan so you did it right it was effective and it came out right okay let's say these are templars that came over and made these box drains or whatever they're they're highly intelligent people and i definitely would say that they probably engineered and planned this out what they were going to do 
to a T. Yep. So if I, as I was researching and I was thinking about box drains, it I actually ventured into the world of Roman and the idea of their ancient aqueducts mm -hmm. and how they were moving water from place to place with them. And yeah. a lot of the shapes that we're seeing match that. Well, okay. if I wanted to put box drains out there in Smith's Cove prior to it being a man-made beach, then I would probably create a dam of my own, which would mean at low tide, I'm going to go put out the main structure, i.e. the logs out there. Okay. And then, yeah, the water is going to come in. I probably would have put in the numbers in order of how those logs are going to go out there so you could do it quickly okay you place them out there you then so you could build your lincoln log set so yeah so my lincoln logs go in the right place and then uh, you get a low tide again you're going to create off of that your lincoln log base you're going to create a dam okay because you're going to use an earthen structure and then I think about the fact that when we had this flash to the next episode and you see this wall sticking straight up and down, yeah, that actually looks a lot like what they used to do for coffer dams to create their aqueducts for working in dry conditions. Hmm. You actually would have these same straight up and down structures. You okay. would have an earth in between that structure and then your Lincoln log structure that then has earth around it as well, okay? <laughs> okay, I follow. So, so then you actually get to work in a drier area and be able to build your box drains, your French drains, your aqueducts, which actually were made to carry water from large bodies of water inland or to wherever it was. Okay. Hmm. So that is potentially my theory here. It all started with me looking at trenches and how we used to build bunkers and trenches during war yeah that were earthen noticing that these mm, what are these wood structures looked a lot like the one that we saw them unearthing in the next episode okay. section hmm. so it could be original searcher or if you're like what you're saying you mean original original depositor yeah sorry duh original <laughs> depositor or it could be an a original searcher <laughs> that is making a dam to try to do the exact same thing we're doing let's say that's the case then that means <laughs> you've got dan's coffer dam mm -hmm. you've got our coffer dam and then the old coffer dam. you're like looking at the nesting doll of coffer dams here <laughs> is what i've decided wow it's quite the thought it is it's a very long and very deep thought but if it were me, because as you talked about us working on the secret, everything we're doing is trying to reverse engineer whatever it is. Yeah. And that's how we have to think of it. Yeah, we have to think about how everything was back in like 1980, 1981, mm -hmm. 1982, when that book came out. And, yep. you know, the clues that maybe were supposed, you know, we were so intended to use, mm -hmm. those things don't exist anymore. So at, in, Sometimes. At, you know, in some cases. Mm -hmm. Or, and roads have changed and yeah. whatever it is. So it's the same kind of thing. So if I'm an original depositor and I made that dam that basically the coffer dam in order to work in dry conditions. So and, that you can build the so box drains. So I can drains. build the box drains. I then, instead of trying to remove this earthen dam it would actually make sense for me to then create the beach to, to, to bury it and to funnel the water to where it needs to go in order to cover it up instead of trying to undo everything I just did. Because what mm. you did was create a very solid structure to continue to build on. Yeah. If they're bringing these treasures over, they're bringing them over in these giant crates that would be full of coconut fiber to protect the ark to <laughs> protect whatever it is it was a common material used in shipping why wouldn't i use what's already on my boat it's there it's easy yeah it makes a lot of sense i, I need to do some research on that to like you know i believe you but mm -hmm. i want to you know verify it myself i i remember i've watched like a lot of documentaries and mm -hmm. stuff about 
old Rome, Roman, you know, waterways, you yep. know, what they've done. I don't recall a lot of it, mm -hmm. but I, I remember watching that. I, I should find those uh, programs again. Maybe we could watch one together next week or something, but that's real interesting. I Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, you're well. I'm sure someone after listening to my kind of long rant here about what I think it could possibly <laughs> be will be able to prove me wrong. And I know... <laughs> Roman is a big stretch, but since that word has been tossed around with the sphere and such, and, you know, we've all been using Roman <laughs> numerals forever. Heck, they're on my clock downstairs that I look at before I put the kids on the bus, okay? Yeah. So these Roman numerals might just be a way of tracking which Lincoln log goes where, right? Yeah, well, you know, if it was Knights Templar, if mm -hmm. it was, you Free know masons if it was well francis drake's people yep. right or not francis drake francis bacon <laughs> francis drake <laughs> mr bacon yeah um you know if it was any of them they you know they came after the romans they mm -hmm. would have knowledge of that technology so mm -hmm. and it seems like when as i got looking at the very basics of these diagrams of how they're done today versus how they were done back then it would really explain because of how the gravity fed system would work as to why the tunnel sorry why we would say we have these booby trap tunnels if you're angled down and then you would fill the money pit now though if i think back to when we put the die in and it came out at three different spots man yikesos that means you're potentially looking at two more sets of box drains Mm hmm which uh, means another two sets of potential dams. Probably in those areas that have the boulderless beaches. Mm-hmm. It could be, but I, I, who knows? Well, okay, so we've explored Smith's Cove enough, but if the die came out in two other places that are potentially almost untouched, it would make sense to explore something that might still be closer to its original start yeah the state it was originally mm -hmm. uh, you know could be still preserved mm -hmm. yes but i mean at least we have a proof of concept here yeah, theoretically right? yeah. yeah maybe that'd be something hopefully they look into in the future but they probably already they have. probably already have and <laughs> you know that's why we're just focusing on smith's co mm -hmm. but i'm glad they are because I'm excited to learn what they learn mm -hmm. and the, see what kind of techniques they apply. But yep. I don't know what what else is going to be found. I, I think uh, I think we I peaked at like next week's title mm -hmm. of their episode, and it's uh, something to do with box strains. I don't remember what the episode mm -hmm. title was, but it alluded to they're finding they might find some box strains, and I am crossing my fingers. I would love for some kind of proof, some kind of something. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I know what you mean, Jelly Bean. <laughs> so that being said, talking about box drains. You're so weird. Yeah, you are. <laughs> so what about, was it Lot 24? Yes. And they're working on looking at all these rocks. Yeah, and Marty, possible foundation. Possible foundation. I thought it was the, a tunnel or shaft. Or a cellar. <laughs> or maybe... It's just part of this drainage system that's coming from one of the bodies of water. I mean, think of how much water is just sitting in there that far in. Yeah, I don't know. I never gave that any thought. I don't know. To me, I mean, last week, To me, obviously. it looks like just like an old stone foundation or, you know, they were speculating cellar. Sure. Mm -hmm. Makes sense to me. But as I was looking through all these aqueducts and such and the moving of water mm -hmm. you know they were going in to explain how you had the bigger boulders in one layer and the smaller ones in and filler mm -hmm. yeah so it's the same theory we use when we have french drains like the one we have in the middle of our backyard right now you know <laughs> yeah. it's all still working the same actually the ones they have are probably working better than ours in yeah, all honesty because they're vintage yeah they're original and <laughs> ours is very small and superficial and not getting the water to where it should go <laughs> anyways so <laughs> that being said i still think well i don't know there was the end of the pipe right mm -hmm. and he laird the, said 18 1850s i think or something to that effect yeah i don't know marty went straight to samuel ball 
which makes sense. And then we see this picture, a painted picture of Sam Samuel Ball holding a pipe. Yep. Hmm. Interesting connection. But maybe Samuel Ball was going for a walk and uh, broke his pipe on a stone. Don't there. know. And it was there long before him. We don't know. Well, Laird said 15, or 15. 15. <laughs> Good try. <laughs> Laird said 1850s. Mm-hmm. So I take his word for it. He knows what he's talking about. And if that lines up with Samuel Ball, could be. Well, and he pulls out the unglazed pottery. And it instantly made me think of um, what we saw come up this last week about Lot 5, which was yeah. not, obviously, in the episode. For yeah, not part of the reasons. show. No. However, the unglazed pottery that Lair pull, Laird pulls out instantly make, made me think of the images from Lot 5 that we saw posted. It looked a lot like that, in addition to other pottery that has come out of the money pit and such. We see the same thing over on the findings from Lot 5. Yeah, this Lot 5 is pretty interesting. Very intriguing. Yeah, so uh, the owner of Lot 5, his name is Robert S. Young, and according to his website, he purchased lot five from fred nolan Mm -hmm. back in june 1996 and he published a bunch of pictures recently just like uh, last week or the week before of artifacts that he has found doing a meticulous kind of archaeological style digs on lot five he's set up cameras and filmed every step of the process of removing these artifacts from the ground you Mm -hmm. know using just hand tools pretty pretty cool stuff he's found too there's like all sorts of like the the things that we think they would find you know like the nails the uh pottery the uh, things there's even glass shards Mm -hmm. there's buttons there's he found a little key Mm -hmm. a giant rock with some swirl patterns on it that looks super interesting Oh, um, yeah. To- what yeah. if that's like a major marker that yeah. like, ties this whole thing together? And yeah. remember knows? earlier when there was a chest and a missing key? <laughs> Found it. Found it. Yeah, maybe. It was on lot five. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> so anyway, uh, if you guys want, I, I, I recommend going and checking this out. What is the website? Uh, let's see here. It is Oak Island Lot 5, and you have to spell out five. F-I-V-E. Yes. Yeah, so not the Roman numeral. <laughs> so it's not like just the v- letter V. Nope. Oh, cool. All right, so I would uh, I would highly re- recommend checking that out. It's got lots of cool pictures of mm-hmm. artifacts, like we said. There's even of like there's like a, over a hundred pictures of just things about Oak Island over the past hundred and I think oh, yeah, fifty it's years. Great. There are pictures of work being done on 10x back in the day. Mm-hmm. There's work on pre Lagina Brothers at the money pit there mm-hmm. are aerial shots super cool i recommend checking it out so mm-hmm. that that's uh robert s young he's the owner of, of lot five and posted a bunch of interesting information for yeah, us to a, scour you know a different perspective and it's super important as i was thinking about this as the big picture and we run across this in treasure hunts in general, whether the armchair or boots on the ground or something massive like this, thinking about how many people own the island and everybody's racing for the same treasure, until you can all work together, you all only have one piece of the puzzle. Granted, the brothers have more pieces of the puzzle than anybody else. Yeah, they have a little bit more of the island. Yeah, you know, they got the corner pieces and all the other important things but yeah i don't know i i I have no idea how much uh mr young here Mm -hmm. collaborates with them if at all Mm -hmm. um but you know he was kind of like i guess a little bit of a protege for fred Mm -hmm. nolan yeah and fred nolan did you know kind of mend fences at before he passed so you know maybe this stuff will be useful to the guys working the rest of the island Mm -hmm. but If not, it's super cool for us to read about. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm really intrigued by that very, like, worked rock with the spiral pattern on it. Yeah, so, like, all of these finds were um, between, I think, 1996 and 2008. Mm -hmm. So this is, like, over 10 years ago now. And he he doesn't, I I guess he doesn't, from what I've read, uh, do any more excavation work Mm -hmm. on Oak Island. So, I don't know. So this... It's interesting. So is he ever out there? I think he goes out there for 
leisure now. Mm. Like uh, when he was uh, when he was doing his work. I guess I was back when Fred and Dan Blankenship weren't getting along. Mm-hmm. And makes sense. He wasn't even able to bring his uh, drive his vehicle across the cross the causeway to you know get on the island. He mm-hmm. had to take a boat every single time he yeah. got on the island. So. I, there might be some hard feelings. Yeah, there very well could be. But everybody has a price. Maybe he'd be willing to sell it. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But like I said, also, this is like this information has kind of been held back from everybody being interested about what's going on the island, mm-hmm. you know, for like 10 years now. Mm-hmm. Maybe he had to disclose it. Maybe there was like a period of 10 years where he could keep it secret or whatever, but he had to publish his findings or whatever because it's it's just it's it's odd i th- i saw a date on this website that said january 1st mm-hmm. and it's odd that he ended his excavations in 2008 so to the, the end of like the end of 2008 to the end of 2018 that's 10 years the day after that he releases all this information i don't know because he had a treasure trove license yeah. and it was extended Mm -hmm. And he was careful to file all the reports, and he took pictures as he went along. And my understanding, I believe, is that he had to report his findings as they came along. But maybe he's just at the point of, okay, here here it is. Yeah, but some of this stuff is turning a lot of heads in the Oak Island groups I've seen on, like, Facebook and other social media. This is, like, some pretty big stuff. Yeah. And... I think we would have known about it and people wouldn't be so excited about it if it, if it was widely known. Mm-hmm. So if it was widely known, let us know, but cuz we just found out about it mm-hmm. and it's super interesting, so we'll have to dive a little deeper. We will, we'll keep looking. It's just it's fun to talk about uh, between me and you. You mm-hmm. know, we've had a few chats about it and it's just interesting, cool stuff. And I'm glad that it's come kind of out of the box and we can get some eyeballs on some new artifacts from Oak Island. Mm -hmm. Or the fact that the artifacts that we have seen in on this website look like the same things that were being pulled out of where we're at. So it's very consistent across the island. Yep. And that's just one little sliver of the island. All those Mm -hmm. artifacts were pulled out of and without Gary Drayton. Maybe he's got the one missing stone marker that (laughs) could unlock this whole thing. You just, you don't know until you literally get all the pieces together. Yeah. So I get a feeling when this was deposited, it wasn't all broken up into lots, and they didn't really care about whose lot lines were where. They def- definitely didn't. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, Gary, he's he, he's all over the place. Mm-hmm. You know, they have him searching this lot this day, this lot the next day. If he was dedicated on one lot at a time, imagine what he would find. Well, uh, that and with Laird. Like, yeah. think about the way Laird goes about a project with his meticulous grid mm-hmm. versus metal detecting. And so we're lucky when Gary comes up with pottery versus when Laird comes up with pottery. It's because he's pulled out a grid and he's just pulling that stuff out of a new who knows what. A cellar? Yeah. Hey, you know, that that, that makes me think of something else that hmm. I wanted to chat about. So this wash plant. Yes. So, Jack's excited. Mm-hmm. Gary's excited. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. I'm not. I know, and I don't understand. Like, okay, hear me out. And if anybody can agrees with me, please let me know, because I can't be the only one that thinks this. No one agrees. Okay. So, the wash plant. Mm-hmm. Cool in theory. I love it. Awesome. Awesome in theory. And in practice. <laughs> yeah. They, they're going through all of this... You know, we haven't seen it yet, except for in the before season one, like preview of the season when Jack, Gary were sh- and Jack and Gary were showing Maddie Blake, mm-hmm. you know, the, how the thing worked. Right. Mm-hmm. All right. So they're real excited. They're like, oh, I don't have to, you know, get my, you know, Jack's like, I don't have to get all nasty, you know, caked in mud anymore. <laughs> I don't have to turn <laughs> <You know>? colors. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, they're oh. excited about it. I'm great. I'm glad they're excited about it. And it spits out all this stuff into these piles, these neat little sorted piles. Great. Okay. Then, so then it's Gary's job to run the metal detector mm-hmm. over all of the spoils. Mm-hmm. And when they find something, they get excited and they're, you know, oh, we found something metal. Whoopee. You know, yay. Okay. Metal, detec- metal detector does not find human bones. 
No. They're... If they're not picking through it all anymore, how are they ever going to find those kind of things? We don't know that they're not picking through it all anymore. What has happened is they have been washed Mm -hmm. and Jack didn't have to wash them. It doesn't mean they don't still use their eyeballs to look at stuff. I mean, we saw Gary pull out pottery. Okay. I mean, they're going to stand and there's no way Jack's going to let those spoils not be The amount that is going to be able to be processed at one time through Mm -hmm. that wash plant if it if it they're gonna just not be use it at full capacity then because if it's used at full capacity and they're able to you know get through lots and lots and lots of spoils Mm -hmm. there's zero chance they're gonna be able to get eyes on every little piece what do you Uh, want them to do do you want them to hire a pi to stand out there (laughs) i want them to be able to find human bones and you can't do that with a metal detector okay so let me just go get my human bone detector it doesn't exist okay it's called a dog they dig up bones okay (laughs) they need a dog on the island yeah so i'm just concerned that some things could be missed i know these guys don't want to miss anything i know they want to find everything it's just my fear is that some little things might slip through the cracks and I don't want that to happen. Okay. I know they don't want it to happen either, but I have a fear about it because it, it might be irrational. It is irrational. I think it, the way that it's been presented, it looks like that stuff can slip through the cracks and potential big discoveries, not, you know, something isn't found or isn't, you know, brought to anybody's attention because it just gets uh, another pile of little pieces of dirt in rocks piled on top of it all. of shakespeare's manuscripts yeah that's and... gonna get lost too okay. isn't it you pose <laughs> i'm i'm just gonna say Where's, how are we gonna, gonna find the book binder with the idea of mm-hmm. you being right okay yep. not a, actually a thing but okay. that being said what you pose a problem but you don't pose a solution yeah so what's your solution would you rather them not dig smith's cove and not no, wash anything? i would definitely i want them to do that okay well here's I the like thing. what they're doing i just they want also it. have an off season and they can put that stuff in trucks take it to jack's house this is awesome and they can all stand around or you know he, okay here's what they do they go oh, that's to a the good one <laughs> mug and anchor pub they get the whole town in uh. and then they take turns bringing in sausage casings worth of spoils okay they put the patient on the table they open now. it up and no metal detectors allowed <laughs> everybody looks for human bones everybody that finds a bone gets a free beer boom Boom. Solved it. Solved your problem. <laughs> I'm a problem solver. You only find the problems. <laughs> if that's actually a problem. Okay, so Mugged Anchor Pub, you may want to get some more tables. <laughs> and I hope everybody's loading the spoils up because there's a bone hunting party <laughs> about to happen. Please invite me because this was my idea and it's a very good one. Okay. Okay. So, I know you're... Congratulations for solving the problem. (laughs) See? No problem. I'm discovering ancient dams. Yep. And aqueducts. I'm finding human bones and giving people free beer. It's because you are a true armchair treasure hunter. Hey, I get some boots on the ground. My my boots get dirty. They were made for walking. Not when you were discovering this stuff. And that's just what I'll do. (laughs) Thanks. So, take that. (laughs) Huh. (laughs) <laughs> I'm a problem solver. Thanks, so, dude. team, you need me on your team because I, I'm I a problem have concerns. solver. Don't listen to him. He has a concern. I fix the problem. It's okay. fine. Okay. I still don't understand why you're still hooked on it being a problem because at least they're taking everything that is in Smith's Cove and washing out your other option. I'm glad they're washing it off. Is to leave it there. No. It's no, the... we want the friends of the cross. Mm-hmm. And those are probably some sort of metal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They found one Or this maybe week. they're John the Baptist bones. <laughs> maybe we're going to find the Jolly Roger in Smith's Cove. No, it's that would be buried in the money pit. A relic. It would be. Smith's Cove, I've solved your missing bone problem. Okay. Uh, we've talked about lot 24 and the fact that those must be part of the aqueduct french drain system and okay we 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 get it we get it okay i'm so smart (laughs) okay yeah sure okay so they also found something round and gold in smith's code oh i was like what did they 
I'm thinking of like a cannonball for some reason. <laughs> a golden cannonball. No, I don't think so. No, they found something that looked an awful lot like a coin. Yes. Could be a button, right? It, yes, because it didn't have those um, like ridged edges. Yeah, but that's a good thing for a coin. That means it's old. Could also be a button. Could be. But there, w- let's just say also that there was gold and I still have not seen the gold dance. Gary... I know, he's kind of letting me down. I'm a little upset. Uh, Doug is about to become my new favorite character because I haven't seen a gold dance. <sighs> yeah, I'm a big fan of Doug. He's yeah. my hero. Oh, yeah. Doug has totally he, gotten he, a lot of spotlight yeah, lately. Yeah, he's, he's really getting showcased. Good yeah, for him. he's doing a good job. He's wearing your favorite thing, a black polo all the time. <laughs> Seriously, guys, something you need to know about Dustin is he only wears black polos and khaki shorts. Not true. It's true. You should see his closet. I've got like a blue polo. I've got like a... It's navy. <laughs> it's almost black. It doesn't count. Yeah. So anyways, that's oh, I'm why... Wearing, he... I'm wearing a black polo right now. Oh my gosh. No wonder you and Doug are best friends. Yeah. Well, Actually, whatever. Doug, be my friend. Yeah. So anyway, uh, they, the, you know, they're looking at that coin thing under a microscope. Yeah, which was super cool. 2,000 times zoom. Looked really cool. Looked like a coin to me. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna call it a coin until they tell me otherwise. I'm gonna speculate and say maybe it's not. I'm going with button and. In... Well, what do you think, How Dave? Bla- you... What do you think, Dave Blankenship would call it? He's like, that looks like a spendable. Yeah. Yes. It would be a spendable button or not. <laughs> it's a top pocket thing. Yeah. How do you clean that much encrusting off of something without damaging it? Uh, well, I don't know, but I'm sure they do. I'm sure they do, but it was just something I was thinking about while watching maybe some metal detecting videos and maybe one about magnet fishing, which I'll talk about later because it's something I really want to do. Talk about it right now real quick. I, I, I want to do that someday. I know, but we've been talking about this for like two years now and we still haven't done yeah, it. You know, the only problem is we live in Pacific Northwest and there's not ancient history here. There is like, as far as, you know, Native Americans and stuff, but... We might find a murder weapon. Yeah, it could maybe. Like if it was Clue, maybe we'll find a candlestick. Yeah. So what is what is magnet fishing? If, yes. If people never heard of it. Okay, so if my fellow adventurers want to do something fun and relatively inexpensive, and it's not metal detecting, so you go out to say a river or a lake somewhere where people go, go to a wooden dock, obviously not one with metal, because you're going to use a very high powered magnet that is then it's tied to like a paracord some type of rope and you throw it out hang on to your rope so you don't lose it into the water and you're gonna slowly pull it back in like how high power of magnet is this really I mean, high right anywhere from 500 pounds i've seen thousand pounds that's crazy 1500 i've also seen 50 pounds yeah you've done a lot more research in this than me like i just think about man like Okay, these people probably would not be interested in magnet fishing, but like, what do people have like, you know, like bolts like holding together like their ankle or something? And that that <laughs> magnet, hit, like they, you know, they aren't very oh, yeah. careful with the magnet. So you have that guy like rip your skin no, off. No, there's definitely like warnings on them. So yeah. when these magnets show up in the mail, you order on Amazon, right? It's wrapped in uh, plastic. It's then got um, foam. Yeah, it's got foam around it. it. It's got styrofoam. Then it's like in a box, in a box, and it's got like these warning stickers on the outside of it. Yeah. And you're supposed, you know, you should put it back in the box when you're done, and you put it in your car because you don't want it, your hand and the car yeah. and the magnet Ugh. breaking yeah. all your bones. Now, what if you have it like in like a like a toolbox or a tackle box or something that has like a metal lid and it gets stuck to the lid. You can't even pull why it off, can you? Why would you do that? I, I don't know. I'm just why, <laughs> why would you? Do, you know you have a very powerful magnet and you think, I know where I'm going to put this. I'm going to put it in my metal tackle box. Yes, I will never lose it and it will be stuck to my car. Like there's no need for a roof rack anymore. I'm just going to do this. Yeah. yeah, please don't do that. Okay. Always put it back in the proper box. Anyways, so the fun part is then when you tie it and you throw it out, and hopefully you don't like hit a fish and kill it and knock (laughs) it unconscious, and then you slowly bring it back, 
and you'll probably get a bunch of garbage the first time. And you're probably going to walk away with a bucket of garbage, but occasionally you come up with some great scrap metal and get some coins for the booty. And then other times... Bobby it, Dazzler? Yeah, maybe a Bobby Dazzler. Wait, we'll get back to that. Oh. So the other thing, I mean, people pull up guns, because especially if you're going underneath a bridge. Those who are discarding murder weapons, <laughs> they usually throw them over there. So if you're in the city and Scary. you're looking for some sketch stuff or you want to solve uh, cold cases, yes, I have seen plenty of articles about that. And because I read it on the internet, it's true. Uh, I have seen safes pulled up from a safe, a safe like with a magnet. Yes. Wow. It takes a lot of work, obviously. Um, really wow. big ones. You have to when you're Man, pulling you your in with the break? magnet, and then uh, they'll get like a grappling hook to get it up the rest of the way. Jeez. And sometimes there's stuff in there. I've seen it where there's like people stolen identities and. Wow. Again, it's on the internet, so it must be true. You never know. Yeah. Um, a bicycle, uh, all kinds of crazy yeah, stuff. Crazy what stuff. a lot of people come up with when they use the slightly lower strength magnets is fishing lures, and people will. Resolve. How many fishing lures have we lost when we've gone out <laughs> fishing? Right. All you of buy them. <laughs> all these things, and of course, here in the Pacific Northwest, they're gonna get stuck on rocks. Mm -hmm. And they do, but people find them, they pull them up, you get all these fishing lures, and you can resell them, and they are worth quite a bit. Bling, bling. Bling, bling, getting some coin for your fishing. Now, here cool. in the U.S., we don't use coins. In our coins, we don't have metals that are going to stick to a regular magnet. You can get a rare, but it's a rare earth Element. magnet. Magnet, yeah that would pick up coinage other parts of the world you can use these other regular high power magnets and you'd still be able to get coins mm. i don't know maybe we'll find mm. like i mean i've seen people find like bags of money that's ma maybe we'll find the rest of db cooper's money yeah that's in the neighborhood here yeah, somewhere seriously let's just go up to the <laughs> we'll limit it. Is we're it... gonna drag it along over yeah but there. Paper bills aren't, you know, magnetic. No, but if it's still in his bag, which has, like, a metal ring on it, okay. all you need is a zipper or something. Well, let's go out and do it. Uh, Not okay. right now, but... <laughs> so here's the thing. We don't have these magnets. We've talked about yeah. it, and we never agree on which power we should get. Like, well, you're like, let's to you get about the it. lower one, and I... I'm like, no, let's get, like, the 2,000 strength, Man. you know? So <laughs> we'll have to go somewhere in the middle, like 500. Wow, that was a really long side tangent but Sorry, if guys. you're fellow treasure hunters and or if you, you want to get into any fun, kind of treasure hunting this yeah. is like it that's like that's it's a simple that's way pretty easy uh you almost entry. called it safe <laughs> no easy entry to treasure hunting it is even though we haven't done that yet you know but mm -hmm. you know it's i think it's easy to get into if you it is want. it's kind of you know it's fun i've seen a lot of people take their kids out and yeah. if you know historic places that can be really fun or i've seen people go out to areas where parts of the lake have dried up or maybe the lake is a newer development just kind of get to know your local history and mm -hmm. how the land has changed over time i uh, people look for areas where there are bridges and uh, train derailments and they're pulling up massive you know Ooh. train parts maybe get some civil war gold i've heard <laughs> of that but usually it's just like what, some really marty, cool train wasn't marty I, looking for that last year remember they had that it, whole uh spin-off mm -hmm. series kind of that was they civil still war gold? have it and okay. they reordered i think a couple it was just a handful of episodes i really it, it was it was okay but you know i don't think we'll make a podcast about it no i i we should go back and watch a couple more episodes yeah. i'm a little interested in that yeah. but yeah hey anyways uh magnet fishing really cool what let's get back to oak island yeah <laughs> let's unless go back that's to a way to solve oak island then, you <laughs> yeah know. you know well they can't put the magnets down like 10x or anything because you know because it's... it'll stick to <laughs> <Yeah>. the side <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're like pulling the whole casing out with this <laughs> superpower magnet yeah oh yeah i let's, don't think so let's not let's not do that it, well hey let's let's talk about the 90 foot stone okay that's yes. like my favorite thing 
Yeah, magnets aren't going to help the 90-foot stone. No. Um, neither will white paint to <laughs> help decipher what is going on hey, he, there. He suggested that. Then he suggested the right answer, which is, uh, you know, LIDAR. He suggested that <laughs> because he carved his initials in that stone, and he didn't want people to see it anymore. L N. Did okay. he do it in his little? Uh, did he do it in his cellar out there on lot twenty four? Oh, totally. <laughs> That's yeah, sure. <laughs> so, anyways, and we all know it actually says L I V, not Laird Nevin. Or it could be an L and an upside down A or something. Yeah, like the L. I've I've seen these things with the L, the A, and then the Slash. dash yeah. up or whatever. Super we'll see. interesting stuff. Can't we, wait to learn more about it. Yep. Doug was. You know, really excited to kind of show it off. Yes. And get the LiDAR people in there. So the LiDAR takes 66,000 data points per second. And That's a lot of data. When they scanned the whole stone, they t said it was 40.5 million points of data in total. It's a lot. I don't even know. It's a lot. The computer does it. Yeah, that's good. Super cool. Mm -hmm. uh, super. I'm excited to see the, you know, once they really break down all that data mm -hmm. and show us what's there. I think we saw some of it in the preview for the season back after the first episode and it all it showed was those initials, but mm -hmm. maybe they purposefully, you know, kind of, you know, blurred out the rest or may, I don't think they blurred it, but you know, made it not look like there was anything else there to save it for the, you know, reveal. There also could be nothing there anymore. Could be. And I know I wasn't the only one super disappointed. They're like, oh, look, we got everything. And we're like, okay, well, we can't read it. So can can you let us read it <laughs> now or take a look at it? No, they got to no, save some stuff Apparently they have to go do episodes. their processing and all that. But Laird mentions that the stone looks almost polished. Well, that's what happens when you beat leather on it for yeah. years and years and years. It's going to, you know, make one side mm -hmm. shiny, shiny and smooth. smooth. Yeah, but he said the whole rock look worked. Oh, yeah. We agreed that yeah. the whole rock look It was worked. purposefully carved out, made into that shape. Mm -hmm. You know, this, it's kind of imperfect on one, on the underside a little bit. A little but, bit. Uh, what about this idea of the 90-foot stone being a decoy? A decoy? Like to be leading them down yeah the wrong path yeah you know that's funny uh my i have a friend that is really into the secret mm -hmm. and he studies um the secret in primarily in new york okay looking for that treasure mm -hmm. um but his name is adrian i won't give his last name okay but uh adrian sent me a message because he knows we do this podcast mm -hmm. and he's a fan uh he said hi dustin I heard your latest Oak Island podcast, and I really enjoyed it. I also think the 90-foot stone is probably genuine. However, I think Charles Barkhouse made it possible to find it. Um, but I don't believe that it, the stone was dug up originally from the money pit. I think the Masons were the ones to come up with that to probably distract people from looking into the real location of the treasury or mystery from being discovered. Yep. I... There's more people thinking... Charles is a misdirect or is misdirecting people on purpose. Mm -hmm. No, I mean I've heard this. <laughs> hey, that's what the, ma the, the that's what Masons do, right? Secrets. I want to know uh, what degree Mr. Charles is within this. Oh, he's Mason. master. He he's like <laughs> isn't it he's like a, the third degree? I wonder if he's got one of those. Thirty third degree. I think it only goes to third. I don't but think good so. try. No, I think it goes to thirty three. Uh, whatever. Look it up. I don't feel like it right now. I could be wrong. You are wrong. I don't think so, though. <laughs> no, you're definitely wrong. Yeah, but anyway, I, I thought what Adrian said was mm -hmm. pretty... Uh, uh, it's not the first time we've heard not it. Not the first time we've heard this it. This week <laughs> or ever. This month. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've the, heard a lot yeah. of things about Oak Island solving lately. Hey, you know what? If Charles is really working against everybody... <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'll be I'm, impressed. I'm actually glad he's doing it because that's, like I said before, that's super honorable and sticking mm -hmm. to your order and, uh, you know, fulfilling what, you, you know, your sacred duty. Mm -hmm. But And he's straight up hope... getting paid to do it. Yeah, he's getting paid to do <laughs> By it. By a network. <laughs> yeah, but I hope 
if, if that's the case, I hope he fails. <laughs> <But laughs> I say I appreciate kudos what to doing. you, Charles. Yeah, I, I appreciate I'm with what you, he's man. Doing. <laughs> <laughs> not really, because I'm I'm not a Mason. Let's just make yeah. that clear. Yeah. Hey, but oh, duh. Um, <laughs> uh, Adrian, I just want to say thanks for reaching out with that theory. Yeah, we like and we like talking about it. Since you didn't ask him permission most likely to share his message to you but i hope i'm sure he'll be cool with it no, i told him i was gonna read it oh okay yeah well that's good because i didn't know that yeah we're, we're, we're buds look, look at that flying yeah. by the seat of our pants here <laughs> you know never a dull moment here at the white house yeah. um let's see here research center anything else she said exciting? that because our last name's white uh i i hope they got that yeah I we think live in I the said White that House. Last, did we? last uh, episode. Oh, okay. Yeah, if I did and you guys didn't get it. So yeah. our last name is White, and most everybody we know, including ourselves, refer to us as the White House. Wow, well, where we live. Yes. Yes. And our family as the White House. We don't live in a White House, by the way. <laughs> it's actually yellow. <laughs> Whatevs. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> yeah. Moving on, so I'm super excited to see what actually happens with the 90-foot stone once we get more data. They didn't show us in the coming soon that where we had to watch part of Blue Book to be able to see the coming soon. Project Blue Book. Blue Book Project. No, Project Blue oh, Book. Oh, Project Blue Book. <laughs> that's hey, apparently... they're proud of their new show. I know. Get the title right. The only Blue Book that's important is kelly's blue book and <laughs> that is the one that tells me what the cars are worth okay move on mm -hmm. yep anyways <laughs> so that being said in that little preview i didn't see anything about the 90 foot stone no Only it was all about the wall about the wall yeah which is a coffer dam whatever you, you know there's more stuff coming about the 90 foot stone because mm -hmm. we have to get the results of all that data we talked about it's true but I'm so excited to learn more about Smith's Cove in general. Yeah. Well, really. It, it's going to be interesting. That that was a total shock when we saw that little clip. Yeah. I wasn't expecting to see some kind of weird wall sticking up like that. No, something that we've never heard of. Well, they haven't either. They're, they were like, what is this? <laughs> and, you know, and Jack gets so excited about every, like, <laughs> anything that's possibly new. Like, when we saw the Roman numerals that were... Uh, number seven he's like nobody's discovered that before yeah. right and, it, and everybody's like calm down <laughs> they didn't say that yeah. their eyes said that hey one thing i forgot to touch on earlier hmm. when gary was metal detecting and he found that what we're calling the coin mm -hmm. um, what you're calling the coin. yeah what i'm calling the coin uh rick he calls rick over to you know <laughs> to yes. help him out and uh like five seconds goes by and marty's you know trots on over <laughs> Yes. And he grabs a shovel out of his hands. He's like, no, let me do it. And he's like, it, no. So you, you wait, we have a different idea of what, what happened here. I think that Marty was like, no, you, you get all the glory. You know, like, mm -hmm. let, let me get in here a little bit. I haven't uh, done much You digging. find all the puppy tasks. Yes. Yeah. So, but you thought uh, that he I was... think he's concerned about his brother. Yeah. What, he's working too hard? Yeah. Cause, yeah. Okay, A, he's always covered in dirt. So <laughs> yeah. y'all know he's always the one that's in there before everybody khakis or not and he is the big brother he is the big brother and he is working harder than anybody else out there physically and he's like dude stop you're gonna throw your back out <laughs> i'm thinking of this because you know my husband was down for two weeks with his back out i'm good now yeah well digging up an entire cove and you know trying to wrangle children you know both physically demanding but i'd say digging in the coffer dam maybe a little bit more yeah so I think he's concerned he's going to hurt himself here. I see it. And, you know, he's getting up there. He is rather fit. Yeah. At least he appears to be. Yeah. But it, I think he's concerned for his brother. I, 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 I understand. I just thought it looked like he wanted to, <laughs> he some glory himself. But then he's... But then he just stands there. He didn't he even help. <laughs> and he's standing there. And Gary's like, oh, found it. He's like, oh, okay. I get to stand here with my I gotta, shovel. I, at least I have something to lean on. <laughs> I just get to lean here and watch Gary work. Yeah, that was pretty good. Uh, I love that they're like passing this red bucket around, right? Yeah. Trying to rinse things off. And it's like nobody thought that you'd need to bring water <laughs> in to help 
unearth some of this because mm-hmm. everybody was so excited to get going. Yeah. But at least we see next episode. They're out there with their big hoses. Yeah, like fire and, hose. Yep. And Billy's out there manning the uh, excavator. Mm-hmm. Yep. Except we see Rick in it next week. Yeah. Hey, some dangerous. something I want to say, you know, I'm sorry. I want to say I'm sorry to the crew because last week I thought, I, I think I said something to the, along the lines of they're just out there for their getting their, Oh yeah. Uh, getting, what, how do I, waiting for the young backs to come in and they're like, yeah, wa- sitting around watching. Mm-mm. Yeah. And I thought they were going to be, you know, watching other people work and, you know, kind of like doing more of a supervisory thing, but nope, they're down deep in it all. Budget cuts. Uh, no there's no way you you said or when we were watching it before you told me that you thought it was more likely because of well less people less less people yeah yeah people wouldn't leak out information Mm -hmm. control who's coming in and out before it shows on tv and i can understand that too but i don't know it would be nice if they had a little more help i think Mm -hmm. but well they're obviously doing fine I mean, they're so eager to get in. I don't know that I'd want anybody else digging out my treasure pit. Like, I'd want to do it myself yeah. until I get exhausted and fall over. And then <laughs> I want to get in the excavator. Then I'd have it. to come and take your shovel from you. Yeah, and then you just stand there and take all the glory. <laughs> he does this. So, like, I'll get the kids all ready for school. And then he'll go run and grab the socks and be like, no, you can't say you did it all yourself. <laughs> he would totally be the Marty. Classic that took... White House. Yeah, classic White House. <laughs> he would totally be the Marty that takes the shovel and stands there and be like, woohoo! <laughs> Bobby Dazzler. Look <laughs> it's at that. It's Bobby Dazzler. Yeah. I'm just going to call the children Bobby Dazzlers from now on. Yeah works bobby one bobby two (laughs) it's fine okay i'm I'm sure they'll be fine with it sure (laughs) anyways anything else you have to uh, add about this fabulous episode or what's coming up before we talk about uh clot worthy moments yeah um one sec how many minutes are we in we're over an hour wow okay no i think that about wraps it up (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah oh that's oh funny my gosh. <laughs> nobody needs to listen to us for that long yeah. um clot worthy last week oh. okay so out of the clot worthy moments which one won last week oh i'll show you oh, will you show me because this is a podcast <laughs> okay. not a youtube video <laughs> no i think you will hear it okay a star map one matching the constellation Taurus to points not only on Oak Island, but two neighboring islands. <laughs> so a star map. Star map one. I can see why. Yeah, that's a, it. Was it was a really one of his uh, better ones of the season, I think. A star map. Yeah, a star map. So that beat a ramrod uh, by it. Well, star map got sixty four percent of the vote. Ramrod had 36, so good job, Star Map. Good job, Star Map. Fail for the Ramrod. Yeah. Okay, this week we have, so we have two. The first one is... A hand-forged spike. Or... The arm of the U-shaped structure. I know what I'm voting for. (laughs) You vote? Only sometimes. Okay. I like I need to be really passionate about it to vote. Yeah. I didn't vote last week. Well, that's why a star map won. Or what is that what you would have voted <laughs> I for? I definitely would have voted for oh, okay. a star map. Yeah, me too. Like Ramrod didn't even register for me. I Sorry. Thought, I thought the Ramrod was good. It was good, but it was nothing compared to a star map. Yeah. Pretty pretty darn epic. So, I think we have two good contenders for this week in order to vote for those. You have to go find us on Twitter. At Oak Island Pod. Yes. Get on there, follow us, and you can vote. Uh, If you know someone that likes Oak Island, retweet it. Tell your friends. Tell them to vote, vote, vote. We need to know about the clot-worthy moment. Sounds good. This is the place where we decide big things. (laughs) How else? Do we have anything else? No. No. All right. This is where we tell people how to get a hold of us. Okay. Well, in order to get a hold of us, we already told you about Twitter. The other social media platforms you can find us on are Facebook and Instagram. Both of those are at the handle at Oak Island 
podcast. And you can send us an email at oakislandpodcast at gmail.com. And we'd love to read it. And, you know, if it's some good stuff, we'll read some of it on the air. It'd be great to interact with you guys a little bit that way. Mm -hmm. We really do enjoy it. We love getting your feedback. It helps us to continue and grow and know more of what you will, what you'll like to hear from us. Yeah, you know what else will help us grow? Hmm. Five-star reviews on iTunes. If you're not on iTunes, you can leave it on Stitcher somewhere else. It's not... Or Facebook. Our Facebook uh, oh, yeah, page huh? it has a place to give us reviews. So. See? All the things. Yeah, maybe next week I'll read a Facebook review. Oh, that'll and this be week, fun. This week I'm going to read two, two reviews on but iTunes. We well, we're getting more and more. So that It wasn't a favorite thing? What? We want They're like, eh, it, I don't really love that part. And then we're like... Let's give them two now. No, well, we're going to get two real quick. They're, okay. They're, they're not long. Don't okay. Worry. Go for it. Okay. So the first review is from somebody named Minfer, I think. M-I-N-N-F-R. Okay. And uh, this one says, I don't have access to a TV right now. This podcast was great. Thanks. I'll follow throughout the year. Woohoo! So thank you very much. We're happy to... We're happy to help. Yeah, to give you the lowdown. All right, and the, the second one I want to share real quick is by Field357. Okay. And it says, great podcast for a great show. Highly recommend. Aw. So, Thanks, guys. You know, those were both short ones, so that's why I thought I'd uh, do two for one. But, you know, I just want to say thank you very much. And, you know, please keep those uh, reviews coming because they help other people find our show it sure does i know it sounds silly but that is exactly how other people find us that being said should we let them know about maybe a little surprise that's coming sure go maybe for it. we can uh tease them to let them know to look for a bonus episode this coming week uh oh uh oh what do you think it'll be well should we say it well I don't know. Maybe we could speculate about how it's about an island Ooh. and some people on it. Yes. Should we vote them off the island? <laughs> hmm. hmm. Well, I, the last person I'd ever vote off the island is Dan Blankenship. That's true. He can stay as long as he <laughs> wants. Yeah. So anyway, that's your hint. That is your hint. And we will have a cool podcast that has something to do with some of that. It'll be Ho fun. Yeah, it'll be in between this podcast and when the next one comes out. So mm -hmm. it'll be a nice little supplemental yeah, so something for you to sink your teeth into. Yeah, it'll be fun. If you're feeling bored and want a nice little story, we hope to have a whole lot of fun there. Cool. All right, guys. Well, until next time. Could it be?
This is awesome.